All right, well, Doom probably didn't run the preloader, I'm imagining. It's definitely me. <laughs> Guilty! <laughs> That's okay, though. Didn't take too long. We are in the match now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Home Story Cup North American Qualifiers. This is, of course, for Home Story Cup 8. And this is Rifkin. I'm casting with Doom, and we're warming up today with another best of three. TVZ be the... Uh, Choice matchup, I guess. Spawning here, though, in the lower left corner of the map. Whirlwind. It's going to be, well, first off, the production tab. But also, the complexity player, QXC. And his opponent. Not from Team O Baby, but a cool tag, nonetheless. The Red Zerg player, recently picked up by Team My Insanity. It is Kane. Kane also has one of the coolest titles in the world. The the most unique title in StarCraft 2. More rare than anything Pult's pulled off, as he's the only Shoutcraft America champion that there probably ever will be. That is quite true. A rare title indeed. You know, it's a shame that that tournament hasn't, you know, no no whispering that tournament's come back. But if I know TB, something will probably pop up here sooner, sooner rather than later in regards to that. Well, I think the first thing he's got to do is find someone else to help assist manage the team because ah. there's no way he's organizing another shoutcraft and running Axiom at the same time. But perhaps Wait. Jenna will come back. I mean, she's stepped down from the team, but would love to see her come back and do some more actual event organizations because it was kind of her baby shoutcraft in the first place. Yeah, we did a lot of coverage on SC2 Links, uh, me and Deadlift, just basically trying to figure out who was going to participate in it. And Kane was at the top of the ladder the entire time. Guy's been around a long time, relatively young. Uh, player, I would say, at least in the North American scene. So a lot of potential for him and a, and a pretty good pickup from MYI because Kane's pretty well known in the Reddit StarCraft community, at least. I'm not sure uh, how much he ventures into TL or how much, you know, we don't really see him in many premier tournaments, but I'm not sure if he's been uh, in WCS NA recently or if he'll be moving into WCS EU when he moves into the MYI team house in Switzerland, well, but certainly a player to watch. One of the big things, too, is we kind of brought it up as filler and a bit of a joke with the WCS America thing, but he won it for a good reason. He's a really good player. Yeah. <laughs> Just bottom line, pure and simple. But QXC not opening with a command center on the low ground. Go for the high ground, despite the fact that it's Whirlwind. Bit of an interesting choice. Whether you're a Korean, an American, or European, a lot of players just, they play greedy, they play balls to the wall, and they're like, all right, it's Whirlwind. My opponent has no idea where I spawned. I'll just put the command center on the low ground. I'll go for that CC first build, but. Yeah, sometimes you want to do that in the event that a six pool nine pools coming your way and if you get caught with your pants down with the cc on the low ground you're, you're just playing it a little more safe and i could see why qxc would do that it is a best of three in this situation you don't want to drop one game due to some you know little small error in that regard so uh, we'll see what he moves into from here playing relatively standard to this point kane's going up to two queens off of his main and natural and going with some quick uh, metabolic boost here in the main I like that too, though. Like he did play gasless, but he's playing, I guess, less gas. If that makes more sense, so he's able yes. to get things to deal with Reapers or Hellings when they come out in the field because they are going to be inevitable in this matchup. There's no Terran player. There's Terran players who won't make both, but there's no Terran player who doesn't make either. <laughs> uh, well, Kane is about to see what exactly QXC's plan is from here. Going to be scooting that Overlord back out of the base. Ever so slightly. Will not get far enough to see the fact that Reactor's going down. So it does look like QXC will be opting for a Hellion-based opener here. And that's a pretty good decision. If the Lings come through with that speed, he's got to be prepared to defend against them. Doesn't want Kane getting some type of uh, advantage off of him, you know, not being in the correct position with his Hellions at, at, the, at some point in time when actually Kane's going to move out. So I'm going to assume he's going to get aggressive here in the next couple of minutes. But we'll have to see what his plans are for himself here. QXC's SCB is about to come and scout out Kane base. Kane's base, so we'll see if he actually makes it into the main uh, to scout out that speed itself. Yeah, my apologies for the mouse jerkiness, guys. I was cleaning my mouse, I was doing stock. I had like a little hair stuck in the laser I was trying to pick out, but it's all good now, so no more jerking around the mouse. <laughs> that wouldn't. No but, more jerking that mouse around. Okay. But Doom, we've got a small update from another series that I think is worth mentioning, and that is the fact that Suppy is up 1 0 versus Pulse. Hey someone, someone who has just recently gone full time, that's an impressive accomplishment because Pult is, well, quite frankly, it's Pult. This would be the biggest upset ever, not because it's Suppy, but because it's Pult more so if you could take him out 2 0. But having a teammate like the Muslim help him train, not at all surprised about that. Yeah, that would be great. To, great start for Suppy starting his full time StarCraft 2 career here. I'm a little concerned for Cubic C, though, in this situation. Yeah. Can you scout it out the third base from Kane, but he didn't make it to the main to see the fact that, you know, speed was being researched. So if Kane gets him with a flood of lings, it could be some trouble. He is well, on the map with his first two Hellions, but. 
Mayhaps be no though, Doom, because what we do have is that very classical Wings of Liberty opening with a Hellion yeah. Banshee coming out of QXC. This is actually really cool. I like this a lot because I've said it before and I'll gladly state it again. A lot of these older strategies are starting to get recycled now because because they've been out of fashion for so long. Kane might not remember how to deal with this appropriately, but with the amount of queens he has on the map, he should be okay. However, Hellions, slippery as they are, do get right into the mineral line and initially fry four drones right off the bat. Continue to try and dodge around these links. going to cause what damage you can. QXC killing 12 workers. Oh my god, Doom. Okay. It's a pretty good cleanup there from Kane, though. He minimized the damage, I would say. The one thing he's going to be worried about, though, is the Banshee opener. So but, he doesn't really have any information, though, to know that that's going to come. But this Overlord may be scouting that out in just a moment here. And I do want to talk about the really big reason so many drones were lost there, guys. Kane was stacking them up in the natural, ready to transfer to the third. The timing on that for QXC was just the absolute luckiest or most calculated, whatever you want to consider it, best hit that those Hellions could have ever gone for. It was definitely good positioning there from QXC. He actually roasted a lot of Zerglings in the uh, third, what would be his third base position. And so he's going to make Kane fall back a little bit here. Kane is making more lanes on top of this. Prepared uh, for those Banshees with the Spore Cars, with the Queens, and the natural four Queens. Oh, God. There's no way that Banshee's doing anything. Yep. It could be able to uh, stop some of this creep spread here. In fact, is going to get one creep tumor. Second creep tumor oh, is just not going to go down. Two health barely doesn't finish it off. Small victory. Small victory. That's still a lot of lings. Without a domineering amount of Hellions, it's really difficult, even if you take a good position to take on this many lings. And as we see, Kane just getting the surround off. However, this cloaked Banshee, this transfuse is going off, but I guess the upside is every less one less transfuse is like two less creep tumors on the map. Whew. QXC could have picked off that one queen. He was targeting the one with the most yeah, really energy on close. it, but Kane got just enough for transfusion there. It does look like that queen will fall regardless here, and this is turning into a problem. Well, the hell is going to come from the north side, well. and he's going to move away from the spore crawler, so not a non-issue. And meanwhile, this third base, yes, there's links here. They will get the surround off on a couple of these hellions, but they're going to take a lot of damage before they clean anything up. And looks like another queen falls, three queens down, fourth one soon to be. And now there's no anti-air defense aside from that one spore crawler in the mineral line. QXC could hammer away at the hatchery if he wants to right now. Really good surround there from, from Kane, though, to deter those Hellions, keep them back. Oh. Doesn't look like he is going to get a Banshee in the process as well. Another Queen may fall here if he doesn't move back to the Spore Crawler. Yeah, another Queen too preoccupied down. in the middle of the map, though, Rickerton. Yeah, there's a lot going on. We're just showing one portion of it. This is where the heat of the battle is going to be going down this third base, but Ling's trying to run around, do what they can. With a full wall off, though, and no Banelings in sight, this bunker will hold. Meanwhile, Banshee's... Uh, Two of them now, just shelling away this again. Queen's about to pop, and QXC's got to make sure he doesn't lose another Banshee. Oh, Hellions once again. <laughs> Bad spot, full surround. QXC will get cleaned up with this. But the great thing about this is the amount of pressure he's put on. Kane's stuck on 57 drones. And I say stuck on because he's not been able to max out or go for crazy amounts. He's had to keep making links. He's had to keep making queens. And he's not been able to just kind of spiral out of control. So while QXC's not causing game-ending damage, he's keeping Kane in check. Absolutely. He's probably, he's also delayed Kane's tech uh, more so than Kane would probably prefer to have it. Although Kane has gotten his plus one, plus one up and is about halfway done so far in the game. So that is going to pay dividends later, and especially considering he's going to be going for Banelings from here. But QXC's Hellions are continuing to die, Rifkin, and looking at his total Hellion count, it's going to be dropping rapidly from this point. It is following up with Bio, so it isn't the most important thing in the world, but in terms of map control and defending this third base, he's in lift, a lot of trouble. Lift! Lift QXC! Actually, I guess he doesn't really need to, as the Lings are going to back out of this, but... Curiously enough, we look at the workers killed, still not a lot. Kane's not been able to get in, do economic damage. I mean, mules are already pretty good. If you're not if you're not setting a Terran back, they don't have to blow mules. You know, you're going to be able to use for scans. You're going to be able to see what your opponent's doing, or just spiral out of control with his economy by dropping a ton of mules. The infrastructure of QXC is looking really good too, Doom. He's got the extra factory. Yes. He's going to probably, yeah, Drilling Claw is coming up now too. These Widow Mines. QXC's been doing a lot of damage with Hellions. He's been poking around with Banshees, but as soon as Widow Mines get out in the field, it's going to get even more dicey for Kane. I mean, QXC, I was mentioning uh, Kane's plus one, plus one, but QXC's already started plus two, plus two, Rifkin. Uh, nine Mutalists are on the way. Not going to be any, well, QXC's already building turrets as well, so it looks like he'll be able to defend, and it looks like he's about to get very... Very aggressive in the coming stages of this game. No Baneling speed just yet, so this could be an opportune time for QC to engage. This army of Kings oh. is going to get a decent starting of a big burn! They actually go wins. off on... Yeah, and actually, the big thing was those Banelings go off on the Hellions instead of the Marines. This Bioforce with Stim is the true terror of this army. It's not those Hellions. 
QXC scan is just out of range of seeing those banelings on the ramp. I'm sure he would have gone for them if he had seen that they were doing. But now that he sees Milas, I do believe he's going to have to back up in this situation. Clears a lot of creep while this was going on too, worth noting. But uh, even if he picks up, that boost is only going to work for so long because, of course, Milas do outrun medevacs. But here come the reinforcements, Ooh. the cavalry to save the day. And third base and meanwhile, or fourth base rather, being poked at by the Banshee. I heard that phone alarm. Time for Red Bull. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm ready, Rifkin. That fourth base is becoming a problem. Even if he lets it finish, it's still going to be desperately low. No detection. Overseer is going to come in here, but it will clean it up. Ooh. Meantime, though, QXC is going to make the third base target of his next attack. Little Mines are going to borrow. They do have those drilling claws, so those will be instantaneously put down. But with so much bio and 1-1, one, one, it's going to be hard to connect. QXC with some amazing spreading from this, too. One more Widowmine to go off. Doesn't hit the Bantlings, however. Goes off on a lot of the Marines and the Zerglings. But with two more Widowmines here, cutting back. QXC, oh, friendly firing. Oh, dude, that's, looks the, like, that's the worst part about playing Terran, isn't it? <laughs> it, it certainly is. I, I do like QXC's bio rally, but I would have liked him to wait just maybe a couple seconds more for this plus two, plus two to finish. He's only got about 10 seconds left in total for it to be done. And, he, you know, with that, he would have had a much larger advantage over Kane. Yeah. But as it is, he's still keeping the pressure on. He knows that fourth base is low. And uh, the way that his supply is counting, he's got to feel great with this economy. 68 SCVs getting multiple mules dropped. This third base is snug and secure. Uh, it's looking good for him. But, you know, we can't, can't count Kane out just, uh, just quite yet because his infrastructure is looking pretty good itself. Yeah, and of course, once you start counting, like, the big thing with these mutalists is letting them build up in number. Five mutalists, ten mutalists, they're not that scary, but when you're upwards of 20 mutalists, sometimes you can even take the marines on head on. But lots of banelings, lots of mutalists, lots of widow mines as well to go with these marines. Both players have a very beautiful composition, as it is the standard in this matchup, but the big question is, Who's better at controlling it? Who's able to get in and make the right moves? Banelings and Widow Mines are going to be completely useless once they've been wiped out. It comes down to, are there enough Marines to take on the Mutalisks? And vice versa, are there enough Mutalisks to take on the Marines? Yep, this is going to turn into a battle of control. QXC has not uh, rallied to this point yet. Still rallying to the middle of the map, it appears. But you know, he could have a much oh, larger... Oh, here we go. This is going to get a huge surround down. From here. Trying to retreat on top of the Banelings or the Widow Mines for the Banelings to go off. But there's just so much rolling in here. Looks like most of the Banelings have him taken out, and QXC with a nice spread catches the last couple Banelings with that last Widowmine hit, and now it's just Mutalus he's got to worry about for the time being. One small drop here in the north is going to push into the space. It's already half health from that initial Banshee earlier on. Queen fell down like it was nothing, and this is going to create an opening for QXC now to push into the natural. Oh, using a two-prong hit to split his opponent's forces. So well done. Very interesting tactic for QXC to pull back over top of the Widow Mines. Really reduce the amount of army supply that Kane has. And Kane is is trying to make as many links as possible, but Look he's at simply the spread. not matching the supply of QXC. The spread on these Marines is so good, but the Widow Mines are just not lucking out for QXC. They're not making good connections. And with that, both players lose their entire ground forces. Just Mutalus left in the air. Big Widowmine connection coming on top of those Mutalists as they try to chase after that army. He's going to have to make a couple more Overseers, or, or QXC is going to have to kill these Overseers of Kane because they're pretty much keeping him <laughs> in this at this point. It's ridiculous. We just see a lot of equalization going on right now. We see the resources lost. Definitely not looking good for Kane. I mean, that's, wow, 247 links have been killed this game, Doom. That's a lot of links, but that's pretty much all he's been making since the 12 minute point. He's had those 70 drones. He's been working off of them uh, primarily here. He has made a couple of spine callers, spore callers that have taken up him at this point, but going to be another big engagement here in the middle of the map. Uh, there's a lot of Bantleys coming up at QXC. He's going for that split. There's no Widowmines to retreat on top of this time, though. Really like how Kane was moving his banelings away from the Marauders, but as he was chasing them, there was simply too much DPS coming to that bio. I mean, that fourth base is going to drop over here on the east side of the map, Rifkin. Yeah, Marines getting the job done. Mutalus going to come in, which is going to allow QXC to once again push forward. A couple Mutalus getting caught out of position. Go down for free. Marines just going to push forward with the Widow Mines burrowing. I gotta say, I love that QXC is spreading these out. So many players, they'll try and get like a clump of four and catch the Mutalisks, but what he's utilizing the Widow Mines out for are completely just to nullify the ground forces of Kane. And retreating back on top of them once damage. again. Lots of links just getting big. slaughtered. Big shot on those Mutalists, though. Every single one of them is going to turn oh, yellow. Oh, and, and another one of mine goes off on the Overseer. Sadly, not the Mutalists, but there's just not enough Marines to overpower the Mutas in the air. 
fucking cute. He's actually adding in a lot. Oh god, if he burrows these widow mines, oh if he burrows these widow mines, Kane's gonna lose everything. But he doesn't burrow the widow mines. Oh, QXC! Sick focus firing there from Kane to take them out before they were able to get down with those drilling calls. Drilling calls would research very quickly here, uh, you know, yeah. relatively for for QXC and let's take a big advantage of there. Is one widow mine that is gonna go down? Cool. Some of the volumes in addition to those Zerglings, but Kane doing a great job actually clearing this up. And can he actually push this back, Ripken? I think he's good. There's a lot of Marauders coming out of the follow-up for this for QXC. He's not producing a ton of Marines. Perhaps a little bit of misclick, perhaps a little bit of panic. I don't know, but now we got the Marines in full production once again. Kane, though, is stuck in this really awkward spot where he's not going to be moving past this 2-2. He's not getting Hive Tech anytime soon. He's got to find a way to beat QXC back, but this is like a tug-of-war. And slowly by slowly, QXC is winning across the map. Yeah, I'd also give QRQ the advantage with these eight mules that are currently mining at this planetary fortress, the fourth base. Meanwhile, Kane does not have his fourth base established. Drones are long distance mining, and here comes a big push right up the gut for QRQ. The wood mine spread out so nicely, but right now they don't need to go off. And Kane's saying, screw it, I can't win this fight with the Mutalists, I'm just going to go for the economy, goes for the wood mines, goes for the SCVs, but the Marines rallying across the map are perhaps a little too much. And looks like this natural base is going to go down. All the overlords starting to pop left and right. Kane no longer going to even have supply to make more units. This is his last desperate play with these mutalists. But good game is called. And QXC will take game one in this best of three.